I recreated Annie's queue ability in Unity. Once again, the visuals aren't there, but the base functionality is. If you've been following the 2023 MOBA series, this is kind of a continuation to it. I plan on recreating every League of Legends champion abilities, or at least try to. If you're lazy like me, you can obviously copy the code in the video, or you can buy it on my Patreon shop down in the description. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, and with that being said, let's dive right into the video. I'll go ahead and drag the Unity pack, which you can buy on Patreon. I'll slap it onto a new empty project, and make sure you have Cinema Machine installed. In these folders, it pretty much has the basic essential scripts, models, and animations from the MOBA series. If you have your own character, all you need are the scripts. I'll go ahead and click on our player, and you'll see a brief overview of the script. Also make sure that you have the player and enemy layers added into your project. I also have another sphere projectile, which will resemble a fireball. All this will have is a projectile script attached to it. There were some changes I made for the movement, stats, and mana scripts. In the movement script, I removed the HM script variable, which was the highlight manager script. For the stat script, I just removed the variable target health completely, and replaced all the parts of the script that had target health to just health. I also commented this part out which handles the experience, since we won't be needing it for this series. For the mana system script, I added a void at the bottom called add mana. This is what we will call when we refund the mana after killing an enemy. Now onto the main script. This script lets our player cast a fireball at a targeted enemy, incorporating mana management, cooldown timers, and UI feedback for the player. It also features a range indicator for the ability and refunds the mana upon killing an enemy. In Awake, we prepare the script by caching references to the essential components like animator, mana system, and movement. We also initialize the UI to ensure that it reflects upon the correct state at the start of the game. The update method is crucial for continuously checking player input, managing the ability cooldowns, updating the UI, and handling the player's rotation when preparing to cast the ability. Cache component gathers references to the necessary components on the game object, ensuring their smooth operation to the ability's mechanics. In the handle input, we listen to the player's commands to activate the ability. If the conditions are met, we either toggle the range indicator or attempt to cast the fireball. The try cast fireball method attempts to cast the fireball by performing a raycast to select the target. If a target is hit within the specified layer, the script prepares to cast a fireball by moving towards the target if necessary. Move towards target ensures the player moves within the range of the target before casting an ability, adjusting the stopping distance and preventing it from overshooting. In this rotate method, it rotates the player to face the targeted enemy, ensuring the fireball is cast during the correct direction. Once aligned, it then proceeds to cast the fireball. Here, we check if the player has enough mana if the ability is off cooldown before triggering the animation, using mana, starting cooldown, and eventually launching the projectile. The launch projectile script instantiates the projectile prefab at the specified spawn point, setting the target to the selected enemy. It also handles the mana refunding if the projectile kills the enemy. Clear target resets targeting and moving settings after casting, turning off the range indicator and stopping the player's movement after the target. The start cooldown method is what begins the cooldown timer, during which the ability cannot be recast and triggers an immediate UI update. Update cooldown in UI decreases the cooldown timer each frame if the ability is on cooldown. It will also adjusts the UI elements based on the ability's availability. In the initialize UI, it sets the initial state of the UI elements, ensuring that they display correctly when the game starts. For the toggle indicator, it controls the visibility of the range indicator, allowing the player to visually check if the target is within casting range. The refund void mana gives back the mana cost to the player's mana pool if the projectile successfully kills an enemy. Moving on to the projectile script, this script controls the projectile's movement towards the target, handling the interaction when hitting the target, as well as managing the projectile's life cycle, including its destruction after a set time or upon hitting the target. In the start, we initialize the projectile by caching the original's target position. We'll then get the player's stats to determine the player's damage. Set target allows the dynamic update for the projectile's target. The update method continuously checks if the target is valid. If so, the projectile will move towards the target each frame, ensuring a smooth and consistent movement. In the move towards target method, this method calculates the necessary movement to advance the projectile towards the target. On trigger enter detects collision with other game objects. If the projectile collides with its current or original target, it will proceed to apply damage and then destroy itself to simulate the impact effect. Upon collision with the target, this method attempts to retrieve the stats component from the target to apply damage. If the target's health drops to zero, the target is destroyed and the on enemy kill event is triggered, allowing the logic to refund mana be executed. Finally, the projectile itself will be destroyed to clean up the scene. Back in Unity, this is the animation where we will call the animation event. It will allow us to pinpoint a specific part of the animation and have the method called to spawn our projectile. Back on our player, we'll go ahead and add all the necessary variables into our inspector. You can go ahead and look and see what you need to add. All you need is a range indicator image, which is just a red circle. Double check that we have the projectile script for our fireball. And lastly, we'll look at the animator. I have a trigger called AnyQ, which is linked from any state, and then has an exit time that goes back to idle and run. That is pretty much all for this video. If you guys have any suggestions on what champion ability you want me to recreate, whether being in League of Legends or any other game, 
comment it down below. If you want to get the project files and Unity package to this project, you can go buy and download it in my Patreon shop. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.